So like I said in the last video, we're gonna tear apart into the Tillotson. We're gonna take the governor out. We're gonna put a built flywheel on it and a billet rod. And I got a throttle plate for it to replace the uh, stock linkage for the throttle. So um, let's just get into it. So I'm going to show you guys how to properly remove the flywheel, or at least a good way to remove the flywheel. So first things first, you want to get the uh, flywheel nut, thread it onto the crank until the nut is flush with the crank. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take a pry bar, get it under a strong part of the block, like right here. I definitely would not do it right around here just because this is a heat shield and it's not a strong part of the block either. And then as you're prying on it, you take your hammer and you whack the nut a few times and then it should uh, come free. Got it. So for those of you who have never seen what a governor looks like, um, that's the governor gear and that's the governor arm. Uh, essentially, we're gonna take this bolt off, take this assembly off, and we're gonna drop that pin down through the block. So we have to remove the rod and the crank, which we need to, to put the billet rod in. And then the governor gear, the way I do it, is I just take a hammer and punch and just punch that out and it'll come right out. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get into that too. So now I got the governor gear out. Sometimes they leave a washer. Make sure to take that out because if you have that rolling around in your engine, it's gonna be a bad day for you. So governor gear's out, governor arm's out. Now you got two holes in your block and you're thinking, well, how the hell did I, uh, what the hell do I do with the holes in my block? I take a quarter inch by one inch long bolt and I just thread it in there. I don't tap it or nothing. I just thread it in there and it seals it up on both on both holes and uh it does just fine i did this on my predator a long time ago that one over there and i've had no issues so that's what we're gonna do As you can see, governor arm hole is plugged, governor ear hole is plugged. And they are long enough to seal it and they're short enough to not interfere with the crank, the rod, or anything else in the engine. So, so we're good to go to move on to the next step. Next step is we're gonna take this rod off, but without taking the head off. So usually what I try and do is I'll pull the rod all the way through the block, just enough so I can see the, the wrist pin ring, and I can pop that off. Um, 
it's just you got to be careful because if you pull it down too far you can um, undo the piston rings and then you got to pull the whole piston out and uh, redo that whole thing so that's the part i try to avoid just to make it easier on myself so as you can see you can barely get the whole of the retaining ring for the uh, wrist pin and the rings are not showing so this is how you want it um i didn't record it just because i was kind of nervous and i didn't want to screw it up so we just pop that off we take the piston out and then we can get ready to put the billet rod in so the wrist pin wouldn't come out properly so i ended up having to remove the head it's awesome um but i got the piston in there we got the bearings on right there so um we're gonna go ahead and put the crank in and we're gonna uh, torque down the uh rod and we're just gonna keep going okay so we got the rod torqued down and it's in there and it's torqued to spec and we are good to go so we're gonna start reassembling this engine and then once i get to the flywheel spot i will stop and show you guys again so we have our arc billet flywheel and we're getting ready to put it on the crankshaft there is two things you have to do before installing a brand new flywheel one is you have to remove the flywheel key which i did um it's a little scratched up. It took some persuading to get that flywheel key out for some reason, I have no idea. Secondly, you need some type of valve grinding compound. Um, what we're gonna pretty much do is we're going to put valve grinding compound on the crank here and inside the flywheel. And I'm gonna put the flywheel onto the crank and I'm gonna move it around the crank a, a bunch of times. And uh, it's going to pretty much match the surface of the crankshaft to the flywheel to have like a more how would you say a better seal that's what i've been told um so i'm gonna do that right now and you guys are gonna watch if you realize why i'm doing this i should probably remove the uh the coil So now that I went through it a good amount of times, I'm gonna clean this off, clean off both the flywheel and the crankshaft, and I'm gonna show you guys what the first product looks like after you've lapped the flywheel. So as you can tell, this whole surface is dull and that's shiny. That's the dull part is where that, valve, that flywheel sits. So that means we did a good job. So I'm gonna clean the rest of this off and I'm gonna put the flywheel on, we're gonna torque it down. So got the flywheel on and the starter cup and the nut on, but we need to torque this down. And if you know anything about this engine, you're trying to torque this down, the flywheel's gonna move. So you're thinking, Nick, how the hell do you get to stop that? Well, just so happens I have the best tool ever invented for this. If you go to OMB Warehouse, you can get a flywheel stopper tool, this is what I call it. Pretty much you put this on the other side of your crankshaft with a flywheel key. I don't even remember where the key is there we go so you put your flywheel key in here set it down in there and then you put this you line that up hold on you sort of line that up and you push it onto the flywheel and then these holes specifically this one will line up with your uh side cover and it'll hold your crankshaft in place while you tighten that down so pretty cool tool I need to put this on the ground. She's tight now, boys. So now the next step is coil gap. Um, you do have to gap this coil to at least 30 thousandths of an inch. Um, I have two feeler gauges here. One is 30 thousandths and one is 10 thousandths. Um, you're good up to 60 thousandths gap on these flywheels. Um, I like doing 40. So pretty much what I do is I put the feeler gauges between the flywheel and the coil, and I push the coil in place, and then I tighten them, and then I move the feeler gauges out of there, and that's how I get uh, 40 thousandths or so. So now that the engine's pretty much done, um, I'm gonna put it all back together, throw it on the bike, and we're gonna try and start it up. Okay, so I got her warmed up. Sounds good, got no issues. 
We're gonna go uh, take her out for a test ride, then we're gonna do some 0 to 30 and top speed runs, see what we can get. So, I did take this bike out on a test ride before I started recording. I gotta say, um, it doesn't feel any different with the billet rod and flywheel. Um, it kind of feels like it pulls a little harder up top, but I think this bike is held back by the stock driver, so I guess that may mean a future upgrade. Hint, hint, juggernaut, Torquezilla. <laughs> yeah, probably. I might, I might do that in the future. Um, other than that, I mean, it feels the same. Um, but yeah, that stock driver really like holds you back um, in terms of, you know, engagement and um, I haven't felt it slip, but it feels like it just doesn't want to get any, get any higher in the RPM. But let's get a, a couple zero thirties and some top speed runs in. Zero to 30, full governor delete, billet rod and flywheel, Tillotson 212, test one. Uh, 6.3 seconds, um, let me try and run that again, because it kind of seemed off. 0.30, full governor delete, bill rod flywheel, tilt to 212, test 2. Six point four seconds. Hmm. Wonder why so. Top speed run. Full governor to lead. Bill rod and flywheel. Tilton two twelve. Test one. Forty-three miles an hour, so I guess we're not definitely not gaining anything off of that. Let's uh, run the back to see if we can uh, match that. Top speed run, Governor Delete, Billet Rod and Flywheel, Tilt to two twelve, test two.
44.1 miles an hour. So I did not gain any miles an hour. For some reason, I lost a lot of 0 to 30. I can't explain that. So I'll have to probably just check the driver and see what's going on with that. If not, I'm guessing that stock driver just can't support the horsepower of the Tiltson, I would imagine. So the final test results, I did a top speed of 44.1 miles an hour and a blistering 0 to 30 of 6.4 seconds. Um, I expected not to gain any miles an hour because I knew that that governor was being fully bypassed with the zip tie and the 26 pound valve springs that are, come standard in the Tillotson. Um, I can't explain the 0 to 30 either. The GPS is really off. Um, stock driver's giving out and slipping um, or I honestly don't know because it did not feel any slower taking off. Um, it still wants to pull the front wheel and I'm not too sure. The next upgrade that's gonna be happening in this bike is a Juggernaut Super 30 series driver. Um, we're gonna throw that on there. We're gonna see how much better the engagement is and how much more I can rev out this engine. Hopefully get a lot more top speed and some zero to 30. Don't forget to like and comment. Um, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe now and then click the notification button to get notified with my next video. Thanks guys, peace.